Hi, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in as ever. Um, you mem may remember in last week's video that I said at the end I was going to go through my processing and how I process these pictures. And one thing that has improved during my time producing YouTube videos has been my processing. It's probably because I've had more time to do it, more time to think about it, more time to research, more time to play. Um, processing is something I've never really felt that I've been very good at. I try to get stuff right in camera, um, and then often, sometimes if it's not right, I look at it in Photoshop, I leave it. I know lots of people spend hours and hours, which I don't really want to do. But processing is really important. Um, it can change your photograph from a good photograph into a really good photograph. And I've produced my own effect that I, I've started to use in Woodland. And it's fair to say that if you want to create your own style, it's good to save your kind of process as, an, as a preset maybe in Lightroom or as an action in Photoshop so you can reproduce it. Now, there's a lot to be said for that about using your own preset, your own kind of color cast, your own color grading, and it will always be individual to you. There's a very famous photographer called Mark Littlejohn who I don't know personally, but I know he won the Landscape uh, Photographer of the Year Award a few years ago. And I've seen a fair few um, bits from him. Um, and he talks about, or he split tones his work. So he will have the highlights, one color and the shadows, often a complementary color. And he just encourages people to just go with what they feel, what they like. And that actually, that freedom is quite a good thing. I do think sometimes though, um, a, particularly, a particular batch of photographs often um, work best if they are processed the same way. So they kind of, there's some cohesion between them. Uh, and this is kind of where I'd be starting to save some of my processing as actions or as presets. But I'm gonna go through with you what I now do in my woodland as a starting point. I've come up with this idea um, of my own Autumn effect. Now, there are loads of different ways to do the autumn effect, and if you don't know what the autumn effect is, just really quickly, it was designed by, or it was an idea of a guy called Michael Autumn back in the 1980s, and he shot two transparency exposures, both overexposed, one sharp, one blurred, uh, out of focus. So, and then he combined the two, sandwiched the two together, and re-photographed them. And what happened was he got this kind of soft edges, glamorous glow thing, um, a kind of effect that he really liked and he used it in um, all sorts of different genres. It kind of suits woodland photography a lot, I think. Now, everybody's got their own way of doing it. There are loads of different ways and no techniques better than the other, but let me show you the way that I've developed. And this is, I guess individual for me, I've been thinking about how, how I would do it and it's copying some ideas and then creating my own using the latest version of, of Lightroom. So let's dive into the computer and we'll have a look and I'll talk, talk you through my process. So here's the first photograph we're gonna look at today. This is uh, from last week's shoot at Old Nobly and his friends. You didn't see this one. Um, I ran out of space on the vlog. I didn't want to make it too long. So I've kept this back especially, but quite a nice image. You can see that everything down here uh, is zeroed. And just a quick thing. I've now been shooting. I may have mentioned this before. I may have mentioned it on the vlog last week, but I normally set my white balance on my camera now to cloudy. It just gives me a nice warm feel. So the cloud is anywhere between 6,000 and 6,500, which I might just put up a little bit for this. And this particular scene, the clouds were over the sun. It was a summer's day, so there was warmth in the air, but it was definitely overcast. You can see that the the greens look very kind of natural and um, often with the sunlight they go a little bit more yellow but I'm happy with the color of this. First thing I'm going to do though I'm going to click on the mask and this is uh, one of the things in Lightroom that's really good now. If I click on subject it will select the main subject. Um, I'm just going to add to that though because it hasn't quite picked up everything uh, I want. So square bracket to this brush um, it's on auto masking so it will find the edges for me i haven't got to be too precise really 
and we'll just do a little bit on this tree at the back here so quite like that's okay and I'm going to subtract from the mask using a brush uh, this bit here because I don't need that really to be any lighter because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise the exposure a little bit just to kick some life if you can see that into the main tree maybe make him a little bit warmer um, lift the shadows front actually just drop the shadows a bit it gives it a bit more contrast something like that uh, the next thing I normally do is the crop and as you know I really like this 6524 crop. Uh, somebody said to me uh, the other day, a friend of mine and I were talking and they were saying that they really struggle in woodland, they find it really difficult. And there's two tips that I would give and I'll probably do a video on this at some point. Um, the first one is to get rid of the sky. And the second one is to use a 6524 crop because I find that works well for me. Um, but we'll do another video in a few weeks time for that so just to, what i've done there is just crop this in so that this bit is on the thirds so that's the most interesting part of the picture i've still got this bit in to give us a bit of depth and this tree so we've got a triangle going on and i've also got this fallen limb here which is just taking us around actually it takes us in as well you could argue so that's quite nice i quite like that um, and now I'm going to add the autumn effect. So we're going to go and do that in Photoshop. It has been said, by the way, people have said to me that, oh, you can just drop the texture down. And if you do that, that does soften it. But look what happens to the tree. Look, it's all very soft now, which I don't like. So I'd rather do this a different way. So this is what I do. So photo, edit in. And you'll notice that I've got the beta version of Photoshop, which is the one with the generative fill. If you want to change yours, go to Lightroom Classic Preferences and then the external editing tab here. You've got a choice there. So I've selected Photoshop beta for mine because I use the generative fill in some of my front cards for YouTube. So I quite like to have that and it works fine for this. So Photoshop sorry photo edit in photoshop beta that will now open it up in photoshop and there it is just get the get that up ready so you can see it and here is the picture so we're just going to do that a little bit just so you can see it now the first thing i'm going to do pretty much do this every time command j which gives me a, a copy of the actual picture because i don't want to be going back and destroying that although i have got it obviously in lightroom but it's always best to work on a copy layer and now what i'm going to do is go to filter blur gaussian blur now this is where you can control the amount of softness that you have the recommended or people say that you should have this around about the pixels uh, count of your camera so mine's around 45 um, and that will do fine now that looks pretty hideous but bear with me this is where the softness come from comes from i'm now going to go to a adjustments layer and click levels and now i'm going to just pull up the shadows i crunch this a bit make it really contrasting pull down the highlights something around there and then i'm going to merge these levels together so these layers together so we're going to look at that um, click on hold command down and press layer one i'm now going to right click and merge those layers together so that's crunched them together but it still looks horrible but if i then click on the opacity and just pull this down to somewhere around and this again where you can adjust how much you want out of focus or how you how soft you want it and i actually now that to me is too much for the tree but it's quite nice for this um foliage maybe too much let's go down to something like 25 percent i'm not worried actually how much it affects the tree because you'll see that in a second so that's that um, I'm just now going to do the same thing. I'm just going to flatten these together 
Um, so let's flatten that. And now I'm going to go back into Lightroom. And this is the bit that I've been practicing, or this is a bit that I've come up with myself. Let's just have a look at that. So you can see how that's now a little bit blur, a little bit soft. And I like the texture in my trees. So what I'm going to do now is just as we did before, I'm going to click on a mask. I'm going to click on the subject. It's going to show me the same thing. Oh, it's a little bit more this time. I'm going to add in a brush just to add to the mask. Again, really quick. Bash this through here. We're going to do this this time because I do want this to um, be affected by the mask. Make my brush smaller just to go up down these little branches. Which, oops, which are important. That's not too bad. I don't worry too much about that. And then also this little tree or this big tree here they're all big actually over that way this big tree here and also this one I like to give that main trunk keep that sharp and to get rid of that so we what we're going to do now is we're now going to one more bit there we we're now going to apply the dehaze Oh, sorry the texture effect back into this so if we just if I just zoom in here watch what happens when I put the texture back in so that's how soft it is at the moment and now I'm going to bring the texture brush right back into 100 maybe just come down I, I never like to go maximum <laughs> that looks pretty good and there we go and that's so if we just show you that with it off and on to off, look how soft it is, and then back. And that just brings all that lovely oak bark back again, but the rest of it is beautifully soft and glow-like. And that's how I would do it. So file, export, and that's that done. Right, let's have a look at the other two. So here's the next photograph we're going to look at. This is that lovely bluebell shoot I did a little while ago. Um, same thing now. Actually, this is quite soft in the background here anyway. Um, it was kind of a little bit out of focus. I used um, a wide open aperture, so that looks quite nice. But I'd like this to glow a little bit to give that lovely soft evening light. So um, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm not going to adjust anything on this because you can see I've already processed it but let's just go through this quickly and see how quickly we can do this so photo edit in Photoshop Photoshop will then open it up here it comes there we go so let's see command J gives us a copy uh, filter Gaussian blur it'll already be there because I used it last time like that I'm then going to go adjustments adjustment levels I'm going to pull this up to around about 13, 14, and then I'm going to whack this down to somewhere around 150. Uh, okay, that's that. Hold Command, hold Layer 1, right click, merge the layers, hit the opacity dial, bring that down to somewhere around 25. Um, I could actually go a little bit more with this because I'm going to bring the foreground back in, so that's quite soft and lovely. Um, I'm kind of exaggerating this a little bit because this is obviously going to show on your screens and things so it's not so easy to see but um, I'd probably if I was printing this go somewhere around 20 but for now let's bring it back up to 28 okay I'm now going to command copy or I can go filter and just flatten these using that way by the layer um, tab sorry right that's done file save that will then bring it back into Lightroom when I close it and here it is and now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use again the masking tool and this masking tool in, in uh, Lightroom is absolutely fantastic it's, it's it's really changed a lot of what I've done um, the way I work I really really like it brush tool just going to add this into the mask because that tree having that tree sharp is really important i think it makes the picture it's very diff difficult with such a small limb actually i've missed a bit there let's just do that bit there and that bit there there we go 
make the brush bigger you just press the square bracket and it will make that tool bigger so we're just going to go up this tree left bracket makes it smaller just I'm just going to tickle some of those um, and maybe this one as well this little lovely silver birch is beautiful and again with these we're going to go back to the effects tool and we're just going to turn up the texture and now that that linear gradient is obviously affecting the bluebells in the front here and it gives us a lovely drop off so if we do that let me zoom this in for you somewhere around there if we watch here and here we should see where that just sharpens those those bits bluebell up but we keep the background the same oops let's just make that smaller just so you can see it so the overall effect so it just sharpens it up and that tree here look very obvious as well there we go that's that one done now i'll save that now the quickly just quickly let's just do the waterfall one this needs a little bit more work and the first thing i would do here is crop this um i actually wouldn't probably do a 65 24 crop because i quite like these greens so something around there works um the exposure might need to be pushed a little bit we're going to just push up the color temperature because i wasn't using cloudy in this particular point that looks nice happy with that i think uh, there are some other works i can do with this but for now let's just leave that like that so here we go edit in photoshop it opens in photoshop so yes we're going to use the lightroom adjustments that i've just did command j create a layer um, filter gaussian blur adjustment levels and you could create this as an action if you wanted to so it would do it automatically for you the only thing is you might want to change the amount of pixels and certainly this next step come on let's just flatten that merge those down this is the bit that you would probably want to adjust every time but you could obviously save an action to just do that i guess there we go somewhere around again i'm going to exaggerate it a little bit so I'm going to pull this back in a second um, and then we're going to go to so this time I go up here layer flatten image that's where you'll find it file save not save as because otherwise it won't open it back into <laughs> Lightroom um, get rid of Photoshop here is the final one so now what I'm going to do exactly the same before I'm going to use a linear gradient um, I'm going to pull that here now I want to add little bits of this rock um, and this uh, with the brush. So a brush, you can you can use different things for this, but I quite I feel quite comfortable with a brush. So we're just going to brush in some of the mask there, so this all stands out, including that foliage. Actually, that's all fine. And we could actually do another linear gradient from the side, but I quite like this bit here being nice and soft. I think that looks okay. I don't want to touch the water though. I want that to stay the same. Um, again, I like this sort of softness in the trees on the left here. Let's just go underneath. This bit is really nice to have this sharp here. Maybe that bit. Uh, maybe there. Okay and here we go again down to the effects go to texture and we're just going to make that pop bring all the sharpness straight back in beautiful that's good actually if you look at the water bottom left that reflection just like having that sharp but maybe not quite totally sharp there we go if we go before and after just see how it sharpened up the rocks on the right and the left just makes the difference the waterfall is lovely and soft so i hope you enjoyed that as i've said you, there's different ways to do it but this is how i've been doing it and uh, i'm very pleased with this 
It's something that I'm going to be doing a lot in the autumn. So there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was valuable to you. Don't forget, there's a competition to win um, this print. Find it of old knobbly from last week okay to win that you need to go to last week's video uh, and check out the end where i'll tell you how to how to enter and what to do to win that um, i'm going to give the that print to my favorite answer okay so uh, comment below in last week's video um, until next week then uh, i hopefully next week i'll be looking at some dead trees uh, which are interesting, so a little bit more long exposure photography, which I'm looking forward to shooting very shortly. Thanks as ever for tuning in. Please subscribe, uh, please like. I know everybody says that, but it makes a lot, a lot of difference to us uh, guys who are trying to uh, develop their YouTube channel. So it doesn't cost anything, just press the button. That would be really good of you if you could tell your friends. So thank you very much. All that said, see you next week. Goodbye.